Okay, team, we have to talk. One of the most asked question, whether that be on my YouTube channel or in my Discord, is either what is port forwarding or how do I do my port forwarding? So today I'm gonna break it down for you the best that I know how so that you guys all understand exactly what port forwarding is and why you have to do it. Hey everybody, welcome to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials and apparently educational videos and maybe even some op-eds to hopefully show you guys everything that you can do inside your Rust server in order to make it the best playing environment that you want it to be. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing. And on that note, a very scary statistic that I've pulled from my analytics, only 20% of the people that watch this channel are actually subscribed to it. That shocked me. It blew my mind. So if you're watching this video right now, or if you've watched any of my videos in the past, please consider subscribing. It's fast, it's free, it's easy for you to do, and it helps me out huge. And of course, like always, if you take any value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up for me. All right, let's get into port forwarding. So first and foremost, what is port forwarding? Port forwarding is basically creating an access way through your firewall or your internet security system, allowing access in and out from your network. Oh, and before we get too far into this, I should probably also mention, I'm not a networking expert, not by any stretch of the imagination. Everything that I do on my own servers has all been learned by trial and error. So I'm no pro. So if I'm trying to help you guys out on a Discord call or something like that, or even messaging back and forth, I'm just stumbling through it just like you guys would be too. I'm just bringing maybe a little bit more experience to it and maybe a little bit more success only because I've been successful with it in the past. Anyways, let's get back into what is port forwarding. So like I said, port forwarding is basically creating an access way through your firewall or your internet security system to allow access to your network. So think of it like this. So think of your computer as an apartment inside of an apartment complex. In order to gain access to your actual apartment, you need to have access to the very front door of the actual apartment building. Plus you need access to the doorway that actually enters into your apartment. So the translation there is, is your modem, which is your outside access to the internet, is the apartment building itself. In order for information to get into your network through your modem, you have to open up a doorway or a port before that information can actually get into your network. So once it's inside your modem or inside your apartment building, then we want to give it access to your actual apartment where you actually live. So on your actual apartment, we have another doorway there, usually a locked doorway. So we'll call that your computer's firewall or your protection from information coming in from the modem. So you have to think of each one of these doorways as a port. So we've got a port for the front door to the main building, plus we have a port to the actual apartment allowing access to our personal computer. So by default, all firewalls are closed. They're all closed off. And as you install different applications, you will notice that it's actually asking you permission to open those ports. It probably doesn't word it that way, but that's essentially what they're doing, saying, hey, I need access to the outside internet. Is it okay that I open this doorway, allowing this application access to the internet? And most people just go next, next, next. They don't even pay attention to what they're doing, but that's essentially what they're doing is opening up ports and rust is no different from that we have to allow access the first time we installed rust the game onto our system we allowed access to the outside internet but when you're hosting your own server inside your own personal computer you have to allow access on different ports for different reasons and you have to allow access to specific applications in this case because this is a rust tutorial channel we need to allow access to the rust dedicated exe which is the actual executable file that is running our server so so that analogy works really well for people that only have a modem, which also probably doubles as a router that creates your Wi-Fi that you can use in your home that is wired directly to their own computer. So for people that have a modem as well as a separate router and then their PC, this gets a whole lot more complicated than that. So no longer are we just allowing access from the modem to the computer. We actually have to allow access from the modem through the router, then through the computer, which does get quite complicated. So basically we have to identify the three IP addresses addresses of the three devices that we're talking about. So we've got the computer itself, we've got the router, and we've got the modem. We have to have those IP addresses for all three devices. So we need to allow access from the outside the internet into our modem, and then we need to allow access from the modem's IP address into our router's IP address. We need to open that port there using this IP address, and then we need to open the port on the computer using the router's IP address. So you've now created a straight channel of information that comes from the outside the internet through your 
modem into your router, through your router, into your PC. So you can see why this gets pretty complicated when you have more than one firewall outside of your computer, of course, which is also my reasoning for never having done any kind of a tutorial on port forwarding. Everyone has a different type of modem. Everyone has a different type of router. Everyone's configuration is completely different. There's no way I can do a tutorial that says do this, this, and this, and then your port forwarding is done. There are modem and router manufacturers out there that make it almost impossible to do any kind of port forwarding whatsoever. If you happen to know the brand name of that company that I'm talking about, and I know there's some of you out there that know, leave it in the comment section down below. I know you guys have felt my frustration. I've tried to help, I don't know, three, four, maybe five different people that have this specific modem manufacturer. And it is, in my opinion, impossible to get through the firewall. I don't know if they don't allow access to that information. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's not the point. So how does this information all apply to hosting a Rust server on our local network? Creating a Rust server, incredibly easy. If you haven't set up a Rust server before and you want one, I'll put a link to a video right in the top right hand corner right there. It shows you everything that you need to know about setting up a Rust server on your own local network for free. So if you're gonna set up a server and you just want it for yourself, maybe you wanna run it for testing plugins or testing build designs or whatever, then you can do that. You don't have to worry about port forwarding at all. But immediately, as soon as you wanna have a friend join this server with you, you have to do your port forwarding. There's just, there's no way around it. Or if you're trying to make it so that your server shows up on the Rust list, it's not going to show up on that server directory unless you've done your port forwarding. And side note to that, it may not necessarily show up for you on the Rust server list, but it's going to show up for your friends or anybody that tries to connect to it from outside of your network. I'll put a link to another video right now that explains exactly what I'm talking about right there, plus a workaround so that you can actually see your server. It feels a little bit more normal than having to do client.connect every time you want to access your server. So if you want your server to appear on the Rust server directory, you have to do port forwarding. Another question that I quite often get is what are the risks of doing this? What are the risks of opening up these ports? I feel that in past videos, I've maybe created a bit of fear around this and I didn't necessarily mean to, but I mean, it is important that you understand that you are opening yourself up to virtual attacks, but it's really no different than just playing the game itself. Anytime you connect to another server, you're essentially exposing yourself to those same attack abilities. So is it something that you should be cautious of? Yes, of course. I don't want to say that it's completely risk free, but is it a determining factor of whether you should run a server or not? No, I don't think so. If you want to run a server and you want your friends to be able to join it, just go ahead and do it. Here are the two worst things that I can think of happening because you've now opened these ports. One is somebody has direct access to your computer. They can come into your computer, they can mess up your files, they can steal your information. I got a news flash for you. Even if you didn't open these ports, hackers still have a way of getting that information. And I got a news flash for most of you you're probably not that interesting. Most hackers don't want to break into personal computers. They don't care what you have on there. The second thing that might happen is called a DDoS attack or a directed denial of service. So what an attacker will do is, let's say you had a player on your server and they got all butthurt about whatever, who knows, they got banned from your server, whatever, and they said, I'm gonna DDoS you. Being DDoSed is an actual threat. And there's actually laws protecting against it in North America. I can't speak to the rest of the world, but definitely in the United States and definitely in Canada, somebody threatens you with a DDoS attack, they're actually breaking a federal crime just by threatening that. So what they do is they basically flood your network with a whole bunch of packets of information that your network just can't process. So what ends up happening is your network or your ISP will just say, well, there's something going on and they'll just shut you down. And you'll know that you're getting a DDoS attack when you start noticing incredible amounts of lag on your server. You see players complaining about not being able to open boxes and everything just starts to slow right down. It's basically because you have a flood of information coming into your network. It can't handle all that information and it just freaks out, slows you right down, right to the point where it says, I can't do this anymore. I quit. I've had it happen to me. I've had it happen to me on my personal network. I've had it happen on my page networks where I'm hosting my servers. Yeah, it's frustrating. The worst case scenario, I got shut down for six hours one time. So yeah, that sucks. My servers were shut down for six hours and there was literally nothing I could do about it. I was in contact with my host, which by the way, is not my current hosting provider. It's one that I left a long time ago. I was in contact with them. They said, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. It knocked that entire network offline. We just have to wait until the mitigation process is over and then your stuff will come back online again. That was the worst attack I'd ever experienced. The one that was on my own personal network was a little bit different. They did the same thing. They flooded me with packets of information, but I was able to catch it soon enough. So all I did was shut off my router, rebooted my router, grabbed a new IP address, then it was done. They no longer had the address that I was at and the attack was over. It was fine. 
So all of this to say, is port forwarding enough of a reason to not run a server on your home network? No, absolutely not. If you wanna run a server, run a server. If you think you're at risk of being attacked or you think your information is at risk, don't host it on your main computer. Or of course, the other alternative is to actually pay a hosting provider for your service. Then takes care of all of your port forwarding issues, all of your hosting issues, all of your DDoS attack issues. They take care of everything for you. If anything happens, it's somebody else's problem. That's what you pay for. So if you are looking at going to a hosting provider, make sure you check to see what kind of DDoS mitigation programs they're actually using. Normally, if they have anything, that's one of the biggest things that they're gonna advertise is DDoS protection. If you're going to a hosting provider that says nothing about DDoS protection, I'm gonna say maybe keep looking. Because once your server actually starts populating, the likelihood of you getting attacks, maybe small attacks, maybe big attacks, who knows, it starts to increase as your population increases. Just ask Facepunch. Facepunch can't keep a server online for 24 hours straight without a DDoS attack. I don't care what they try to tell you. I've been on their servers before as they're being attacked. There are periods of time where it will get attacked at the same time every day for 14 days straight. I say 14 days straight because I was actually there when it happened. It does happen. Are DDoS attacks dangerous? Absolutely, they're hard on your system. They can also be hard on your bank account. If you have a bandwidth cap with your internet service provider, that DDoS attack could eat up your entire bandwidth for your month. Then you start going into overages and all this other stuff. So are DDoS attacks a big deal? Yes, absolutely they are. That's why there's laws preventing them. I think I'm actually making this worse than I intended to. I was trying to reduce fears in port forwarding and I think now I'm getting into an area where I'm actually making it more scary. Don't be afraid of it. The whole point of this video is port forwarding sounds difficult and scary. It's really not difficult and it's definitely not scary, but it is absolutely essential for your Rust server if you want people from outside your network to have access to your Rust server. Okay, that's enough blabbing from me. You guys understand now what port forwarding is and why you need to do it. Now I'm also hoping that you guys understand why I don't specifically have a video on how to do your port forwarding. Also on that, there is a ton of resources out there about port forwarding. You can go to portforward.com slash Rust and they talk about the specifics involved with port forwarding for your Rust server. So the information is out there. Just when you are looking for it, understand that it's kind of the broad strokes of the situation and it's not gonna be specific to your system. If you want specifics on your system, you have to research your specific modem and your specific router if you have one. So there's definitely a little bit more legwork involved, but you can do it, I promise you, because I did it. I didn't know what I was doing when I first started out and I was able to get my ports all dealt with. So I know that if I can do it, you can definitely do it too. I don't care how dumb you think you are, you're definitely not as inexperienced as I was when I first started on this journey. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, always remember to leave me that thumbs up. And because that number is so shocking to me, I'm going to bring it up again. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. Only 20% of my views are actually coming from subscribers. And if I did earn your subscription today, make sure you turn on the notification bell as well so that you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So until next Friday, I hope you guys are staying safe and taking care of each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.